Welcome to Real Talk, the show where we look at issues facing our youth. My name is Ome Congo and I'm your host. And across Maryland and D.C., people talk often about the issues that our youth are facing, from dealing with issues of violence to educational issues to unemployment. And many people don't spend a lot of time celebrating the organizations that are out there doing great work on behalf of youth. Today I have two special guests from an organization called the Latin American Youth Center, which has been in in existence for over 30 years. And today we're going to hear about the wonderful programs that they have going. I have with me Tamara Marzouk as well as Shorty. Welcome to Real Talk. Thank, Thank you for having us. So, no, definitely. So, Tamara, you, your position at LAYC, Latin American Youth Center, is, is youth developer. Tell me a little bit about your job. So, youth developer basically means that at LAYC we do everything we can to positively develop youth into mm -hmm. young adults. Mm -hmm. So um, I recently, through the organization, went through a training on positive youth development and mm -hmm. it's just about basically every way that you can be there to support youth um, along the way and how that can look so different from youth to youth. It sounds like a lot of work. Program. <laughs> yeah, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of work. Yeah, definitely. And how long have you been doing that for LAYC for? About a year and a half. Yeah. And you, see, you really seem like you love it. You I just do. <laughs> speaking to you about it, there's always a lot of energy when, when speaking about what you do there. I do love it. I do love it. I've been really, really blessed to work with some amazing, amazing youth that have inspired me a lot. Like Shorty? Including Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> Including Shorty, Shorty. What, what, what has been your role with LAYC? Um, I worked as a peer educator for um same project with Project Stripes, which is a LGBT youth organization. And um, I also was a student at first. I started off as a student and then worked my way to becoming a youth peer educator. Okay. So it's pretty fun, and I always have fun with Tamara when, I'm, when we're working together. So. Yeah, yeah. Where does LAYC operate? We're in D.C., mm -hmm. and we're also, we have three sites in Maryland, mm -hmm. in Langley Park, in Riverdale, and in Silver Spring. And you all primarily operate out of the D.C. branch. Yes. We do. We yeah. do. Yeah. What has been the, the, the best part? I mean, I recently attended one of your conferences here dealing with youth and, and, and health issues. What has been the, the best part? And the reason why I ask about what's the best part about the work that you do is because there's such a negative perception out there of working with young people. Mm -hmm. You know, you go into work in a community center and people say, oh, watch your back, or, you yeah. know, young people are no good. But you, you all are clearly excited about watch your work. What's, what's the best part of your job? Let's we'll start with you, Shorty. Um, well, the best part of my job being is though everyone looks at me as like you're youthful, so you probably can relate to whatever I relate to, so I can just come and talk to you and be like, okay, well, this is what's wrong, and can you help me? And then I just go over and be like, Tam, I need help here, mm -hmm. or I need help there. Like a lot of them, I'm not intimidated by any of them, so like yeah. for me, I just be like, okay, look, we have this program, we can help you here, and like as far as like maybe if you have problems at home, we can help you or something like that. So I just give them the resources that they need. So mm -hmm. not too bad. <laughs> no, that's, that's excellent. How about you, yeah. Tamara? What's the best part of, of your job? Um, I think there are two. Mm -hmm. One is listening. I have learned so much from all the youth that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, it's unbelievable. I never thought I could learn so much in a year and a half. Uh, way more than any school has ever taught me. Wow. Um, and the second is laughing. Like Shorty and I <laughs> have had some great times just laughing yeah. with all the youth that I work with. Is mm. it's just wonderful and hilarious sometimes. And mm. so just keeping that perspective that not everything has to be so serious. And, and speaking on that, one of the things I've also loved about learning about your organization is that you're very proactive. Mm -hmm. Your your recent conference was primarily dealing with issues uh, of health and building healthy communities mm -hmm. as opposed to just being reactive to, to violence and things that mm -hmm. are taking place. Mm -hmm. what, what led you all to, to, make, to go to that conclusion that this is the way that we need to go to focus on building healthy communities as opposed to doing what some other people do, which is just be reactionary? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that in a lot of ways, um, especially the health promotion team, which mm -hmm. I can speak for because I'm on the health promotion mm -hmm. team, um, when creating the conference and when thinking about programming, we mm -hmm. really think about um, where to go in a positive direction, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, what would the ideal outcome look like instead of what are we fighting against, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, yes, yes. So all of our workshops were about building healthy relationships, um, mental health, sexual health, substance abuse, and mm -hmm. um, what substance abuse doesn't look like, you know, what healthy uh -huh, right, um, right, use of substances right. is. Um, and all different types of peace building, um, basically every aspect of that word health and what that would look like in a person's life. 
Absolutely. Now, when you all were, were doing this at, at the conference, did you find, Shorty, that the, the, the young people were receptive to the direction that you were going in? Because sometimes young people can just come and just want to have a gripe session, you know, mm -hmm. oh, we don't got this, we don't have jobs. And, but, you know, do you feel like they are re responsive to the way you all delivered your message? Um, well, down at the conference, uh, a lot of them, they, they like, oh, I don't want to do this, or I don't want to do that. So when we say, okay, well, this is what you get if we do this, mm -hmm. or this is what you get, it's like, um, like if you do this, we give you this. Yeah. Like yeah, so, yeah. a lot of them. When you mention food, everybody runs. <laughs> so it's like food uh, is their main, their main thing. So mm -hmm. they want to eat. So like we say, okay, well you gotta come and do this for us, and then we'll feed you mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Both then that, everybody's just gonna run and be like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna have fun. But then they realize, oh, well, we're having a good time. Mm -hmm. So let's just continue to stay there. Mm -hmm. You know, let's mm -hmm. do this, and we just hang out. And if we want to leave later, we'll leave later. So, you know, it's not too bad when they just come and be like, oh, well, we had a good time and you should have been there. They go and tell their friends, oh, you should have been there. You know, we met this person. We met that person. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's pretty cool just absolutely, to watch that. Absolutely. Now, you all mentioned the term Latin American Youth Center. Does the organization only deal with Latino youth or is it a cross section? Um, it deals with um, LGBT youth. Mm -hmm. um, it also deals with um, black African-Americans as well as other cultures. Mm -hmm. um, they not just one culture, they make sure they gather everybody. Because mm -hmm. it's not just one culture in the neighborhood, it's everybody. Yeah. So yeah. everybody's different. So they bring everyone into the neighborhood to help out or do something. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty creative. Absolutely. Now, now Tamara, what, what is one of the things that you really wish that our, our viewers really knew about young people. I mean, you're somebody who's been committed to, to young people and learning a little bit about your career. You know that there are so many misperceptions about young people. Yeah. What do you wish that more people, especially adults, knew about our youth who are out there? I think, I think a lot of people out there think that adults are better than youth. Uh, adults are, are wiser than, than youth. youth. Wow. Yeah, adults yeah. are smarter than youth. Mm -hmm. You know, they have all this experience behind them. Um, and I think the opposite is true. I think it's Adults can learn so much from youth, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and anyone working with youth at LAYC would be able to tell you that as well. I think mm -hmm. youth can teach you so much about yourself, can mm -hmm. teach you so much about them, their lives, their experiences, yeah. um, and I think that a lot of people are more closed-minded in terms of just thinking, like, I'm the one who's going to teach you, mm -hmm. instead of having mm -hmm. the humility of, I can learn from you as well. Yeah, yeah. Do, did you find that at the conference, as, as it relates to having a, a strategy of health promotion, mm -hmm. do you find that a lot of the young people you're dealing with, they're getting mixed messages from society about what makes a healthy lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think that there is, there, there's a, a role of harm reduction that we, we definitely talk a lot about harm reduction or mm -hmm. risk reduction. Um, and not well for instance okay so i work on the sexual health team mm -hmm. and um some people definitely promote abstinence only education and mm -hmm. some of our youth have been exposed to abstinence abstinence only education um meaning promoting just not having sex at all right. um whether it's in the home or in schools or whatever um and so then they come to our programs and we definitely have a more comprehensive sexual education program in terms of just recognizing that that is the youth's choice and we're not going to push one decision on them. And mm -hmm. if um, they do choose to be sexually active, how can they do that in a safe and healthy way? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot of that, um, same with substance abuse, a lot of this like, no, don't do it at all versus if you're going to do it, we will support that decision, but mm -hmm. let's, let's work with you in a healthy way to figure out how to do that. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel society in terms of media, for example, music videos and, and mm -hmm. the like, promote a, a healthy lifestyle for our, for our young people? Um, you can be honest. This is real yeah. talk. This is real talk. <laughs> I'll be real. <laughs> well, for me, yeah. a lot of the videos I watch, no. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they do the total opposite. They say, oh, this is good for you. And she do that. Some videos, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, some mm -hmm. people that actually can relate to the youth and be like, well, I'm not going to show sex on TV, I'm going to show you something different, I'm going to show you like knowledge or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Most of them, not so great. Like some of them, they have like this weird way of showing you, oh, well, it's good to have sex, so it's good to do that. Sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. always yeah. uh, a consequence after everything you do. Mm -hmm. So like they don't, they don't relate to 
what the youth want or what they they just want to relate to what money is going to bring to them like yeah, so yeah, it's right, called sex right. sales right mm -hmm. so yeah, right. that's mm -hmm. what that's exactly. what they promote <laughs> yeah. Yeah. wow that's, that's that's really sad but the, what i love about what you all do particularly having attended your conference is that you kind of use a little bit of everything you, you have mm -hmm. the workshops but you also blend in music you blend in art mm -hmm. ha have the young people been responsive to, to the to the way in which you all deliver your message i i mean i think so um i think that varying it up and mm -hmm. recognizing that not everyone's going to be responsive to a, a workshop. And mm -hmm. if we say, hey, come to a workshop, that's like Shorty was saying, it, it's not going to draw a lot of people if you just say, let's come to a workshop. Yeah. You, know? you got to add something to it in order yeah. for them to really come to it. Like you yeah. got to say, oh, well, we got food or it's a free basketball court you can come and play on too. Like mm -hmm. you got to add something to it in order for them to come. Yeah. Otherwise, no one's going to show up. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. like we told them, you know, you get breakfast and you get lunch. Yeah. You know, yeah. after that, yeah. you know, that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they show up and that's it. Then you got them. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. and, and I think also one big part of it was giving the youth an opportunity to take ownership of it and be a part of it. And um, we had an expo yeah. where youth went to different tables and did interactive activities and then were entered in a, ra a raffle that mm -hmm. Shorty announced um, the prizes to. And those were some also, great prizes, really. Yeah, I wish yeah. I could have answered in that contest, yeah. but I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah, no and then also um, letting youth have the opportunity to do their own performances at the end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. It's I think that's huge if if the youth are a part of it and like creating events. And Shorty's had a lot of experience with creating um, oh, events yeah. through mm -hmm. our program mm -hmm. and getting that buy-in. I think that's huge. I think that brings them in more than anything, definitely. For people who are just learning more about LAYC as well, what are some of the other programs that you have that you may do throughout the summer? Mm -hmm. what, are, what are the age ranges of people who are in the program? Mm -hmm. As it, you know, if they start coming in at 12, 14, what, what are some of the other things you have going on that people might can get involved in? Yeah, so we cater to youth 11 to 24, mm -hmm. ages 11 to 24. Um, there are residential programs, there are job readiness programs, mm -hmm. um, there are health promotion programs. Parenting. Parenting, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and prenatal classes mm -hmm. on the health promotion team. Mm -hmm. um, also, you want to talk about the Art and Media House? Um, we also have the Art and Media House where it deals with music, art. Um, if you want to do DJ, they have that as well. So for aspiring MCs like right. myself. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so um, I've done it before. Like um, I had a really good time doing it. Um, it's also they have a talk show host there where they have do radio where you can be on the air and talk to everybody and just share your thoughts on what how you feel mm -hmm. you know and, mm -hmm. uh, and people listen they tune in to listen on um itunes mm -hmm. so um they they do that so it's pretty cool so is that i gotta worry about competition and people coming for my job <laughs> <laughs> right, over 13 years old you might have competition to worry about right here uh, <laughs> <hey>. <laughs> Wow, that's, that's, that, that's really amazing. And, and one of the projects that we're going to talk about after our, our break is a program that you're both involved in called Project Stripes. And I definitely wanted to save that for after the break because I really think that you're getting into some innovative and groundbreaking work. So we'll talk about that a little bit after the break. Okay, All right. thanks. We'll be right back with more Real Talk. this hard, graduating can be even harder. But you can help Ativa and the students in your community make it through by visiting BoostUp.org. Welcome back to Real Talk, the show where we look at issues facing our youth. I am here with Tamara and Shorty of the Latin American Youth Center. And before we went to break, we talked about a, a wonderful project that you all are involved in called Project Stripes. And, and Shorty, I was hoping you could educate us a little bit on what Project Stripes is. Okay, well, Project Stripes is um, a LGBT, U, I mean, I'm sorry, Q, um, and we just added the A, which also stands for lesbian, bi, um, questioning, also known as queer, and transgender, and then allies. What's the A? Allies. Allies, oh, yeah, oh and the allies, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which is like a group of teenagers, mm -hmm. or youth, who kind of come together in like a group session to talk about something that may be going on at home or like events that we plan 
like we recently, well, last year we did a event which was um, Gay Pride, mm -hmm. which was actually pretty fun from what I was told. I wasn't there. I had to go and attend to some other business, mm -hmm. but um, we've done other events like Gay Prom and um, Youth Pride. Mm -hmm. It's like plenty of things that we've done that's really, you know, good for them. They like it, so yeah, yeah, they yeah. always enjoy doing it. We also did um, our talent show. Um, we're doing it. We're going to do another one pretty soon. So uh -huh. we're looking forward to this one. Now, as I said before, we call the show Real Talk, right? Now, this is D.C., Maryland area. Everyone calls it a, a liberal city, <laughs> people, freedoms and everything. Why do you feel like in this area it's important for members? And I'm, I'm learning here because you added the A, so I'm saying LGBTQA mm -hmm. community to, to really get together and, and support. Do you really feel like there's serious issues of discrimination that people within that community are facing even in this type of city? Um, yes, um, a lot of the issues are pretty much discrimination. Mm -hmm. They don't, they always look at it as though that you guys are, you know, the bad people. Mm -hmm. Like you, you should be the ones that should be going to hell or something like that. They always wow. look at it as like, oh. 2012. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You know, so they say, oh, well, I'm not going to like your party. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to move away from you and not talk to you. Mm -hmm. But why? We're just like you. We're just normal. Mm -hmm. Only thing is we like the same sex mm -hmm. versus like like in your cat or, mm -hmm. you know. So people, a lot of people look at it as though, well, we don't like you or we're not going to let you come in our store. Like I've had one store that I've been to, like this was like years ago, but I went to um, a place called Claire's, which is like mm -hmm. a regular store that you would go to mm -hmm. to get like earrings and yeah, yeah, rainbows yeah. and bands. Yeah, got some costume goods there for, right. for the kids. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So I went in there and um, this was in D.C. Um, it was a girl. She was a manager. She was homophobic. Mm -hmm. So she didn't want us shopping in her store. Wow. So she immediately called security on us to escort her out her store, mm -hmm. which was terrible because I was like, why we can't shop in your store? Mm -hmm. She said, because I'm homophobic. I was like, but you have someone who's actually gay working in your store, mm -hmm. but you're homophobic, but you're not homophobic about that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Interesting. Why would you? Why would you say something like that? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was it was hard for us to really do a lot of things, and and sometimes you have to say, well, you got to deny that you're gay because a lot of people don't want to be around you. Mm -hmm. Versus like trying to come out and be like, oh, well, I like this person, or I like that person. Mm -hmm. you know, so it makes it difficult on our part. So what um, Project Stripe does is we don't discriminate. We kind of celebrate who you are and just kind of, you just come as you is. Mm -hmm. come at, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, come as you are. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can come in with like the skinniest clothes, like really tight clothes, and uh -huh. we just accept uh -huh. you anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. you're just you. This mm -hmm. is who you are. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah. we don't discriminate with that, so. Wow, amazing. And Tamara, <laughs> have you found if you're involved in Project Stripes that it's, it's a really good way for just to show support for, for members of the community? Yeah, definitely. And I think also it's about, like Shorty was saying, we get together as a group twice mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about how it's short, showing support for each other, you know, um, and what that looks like, whether it's just listening mm -hmm. um, to what's going on in your life, no matter how bad it is or good it is, mm -hmm. um, listening to each other and being there for each other. And also... Um, for instance, tomorrow we're going to participate in a silent march um, mm -hmm. in memoriam, or not memoriam, but um, in observance, I guess, of the recent violent attacks that have happened right around our center, actually, mm -hmm. um, in Columbia Heights. We'll talk um, about those, because some people may not know about yeah, those. Yeah, so in the past week, um, just a week ago, mm -hmm. um, on Sunday, March 11th, and then Monday, March 12th, there were th three violent attacks, unrelated attacks, mm -hmm. um, two against gay men, and one against a transgender woman. Mm -hmm. um, and none of them were fatal, but um, all of them were really devastating to the community. And there have been numerous, numerous violent attacks in yeah, D.C. Yeah, but it's more than, more than that, because they it's even had one. They yeah. had one in DuPont Circle. Mm -hmm. um, it was a guy who actually works for Smiles, which is another organization. He was um, brutally attacked. Um, it was by a group of men, I think. And his face, uh, he's, he's fine now, but... His face was kind of really banged up pretty bad. Yeah. He kind of took his phone and everything else, and he was just attacked just be, just for being gay. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's been other attacks where 
I like I've been attacked a couple times maybe, and um even when I was attacked I was I was stabbed once. Wow. And um um it was like right in my rib like so like it's it's hard it's hard mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so you have to literally watch your back every now and then you can't walk in certain areas because you feel like you're gonna be attacked again mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you gotta walk around with a mace or some type of weapon because you don't feel safe. Yeah. And that's only because police is not really helping us mm -hmm. in the way that they should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, I know we did, like, a conference uh, once where they had a lot of us come in and talk to the police and talk to everyone, and we kind of talked about it. And even now, like, they're still trying, but it's still difficult because it even happens in your own neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. being in your own neighborhood where you have to deal with people that don't like you, mm -hmm. people that really don't like gay people. Maybe even family members, possibly, mm -hmm. who, don't, yeah. who don't, aren't accepting as well. Yeah, yeah, so you have to deal with a lot of that. And then having the cops not do anything but sit there in their cars and just not say nothing or just act like it's, it's not there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it happens every day. So, you know, it's terrible. Oh. And <laughs> do, do you all feel like within Project Stripes that students are, who are involved in the program are starting to become more more confident of not not only not in terms of confident in themselves but in terms of just expressing themselves outwardly when there are so many issues of, of hate and ignorance out there is project stripes helping with that part of the self esteem so i've i've definitely seen that and mm -hmm. at the end of the program last year we did interviews with all the participants you probably remember that shorty i think i missed that one uh, but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> no I, I don't cuz I, I don't remember being interviewed but it's okay but uh, <laughs> But yeah, and, and a lot of them did say that um, even just that idea of having this family outside of their own family mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. was so supportive helped them to gain more self-esteem. Also, a lot of the youth talk about seeing role models in each other. Um, mm -hmm. Shorty has been a role model for a lot of the youth um, a, in terms of comfort with oneself, you know, mm -hmm. um, and self-esteem, mm -hmm. like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've, I've definitely seen a change in some of the youth from day one to right now. Um, and how, 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 how young are some of the, the students who are getting involved in the program? Because I've seen stories across the country of, uh, of kids as young as 10 years old mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. have hung themselves because yeah. one particular boy, I believe his name was Jamie, I can't remember his last name, who, who hung himself, you know, because he, he was gay and was bullied mm -hmm. at school. I mean, are you seeing students, you know, I know you see you started at age 11. Are you seeing students, you know, that young starting to deal with this issue, particularly as it relates to being bullied? Well, well, bullying, my brother, he's not gay, but my brother, he's one of those ones that were, that was bullied in school mm -hmm. and he kept it to himself, mainly because he didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. His school didn't want to help. Mm -hmm. It was nothing he can do. Mm -hmm. So it was like he kept it for over maybe a year or two. Mm -hmm. And then he finally came and told someone, and they still didn't do anything. They just kind of pushed it on back, like, oh, we're not going to deal with it. Yeah. We're going to leave it alone. So it was like, you know, why do you continue to bully? And then my brother, he's like, what, 11? Mm -hmm. and wow. Wow. So the boy is like 18, being bullied wow. for no reason. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. just wants to bully the boy. But a lot of times I say the reason you're bullying this person is because either, one, you want to be like this person, you the person may have something that you don't have, mm -hmm. or it's just because it's something that's going on in your own home that you react to it, so you want to pick on someone to make yourself feel better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one of the main things that I've learned from just a lot of people that's been bullied, like, or I talked to maybe a couple bullies that say, oh, well, this is the reason why I'm reacting to it. Because <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't get that much respect at home or because no one loves me at home. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you get that a lot from some of the people. But a lot of them, they won't tell you. They're just going to continue bullying a person and just act like it's normal. Mm -hmm. So it still goes on today. So, like, we're trying to find ways to resolve it in some way where you can go to a teacher or something or ha come to us and talk to him. We can talk to someone that and get it resolved, at least try to anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so, that's so interesting. The, in addition to the work that you all do in, in supporting uh, members of the community, are you also involved in, in advocacy work? I know you said you've had some meetings with police, but do you also do things like target politicians and talk to them, or are you just more focused on, on the support side? 
So we do a little bit of each. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't done a ton of advocacy yet, mm -hmm. um, but we really are about making sure it's advocating um, around the issues that the youth feel are the most important. Um, mm -hmm. So tomorrow we are going to this march. Um, we are showing our support in certain ways for, for different issues that do affect the LGBT community, but mm -hmm. we always have consistent conversations around what issues are most present in your lives, you know, because mm -hmm. that might not be, it may not be gay marriage, you know, at the moment. It may mm -hmm. not be bullying mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. moment, depending on what the youth are, are going through in their lives, yeah. depending on what the youth are talking about, are dealing with every day. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What would you say to a, a young person right now who's watching the show and just say, well, I never really knew much about this organization, but mm -hmm. I, I, I'm thinking of getting involved. Well, what, what would you say to them? What should they be doing? Um, well, personally, if you are the person that may want to come to something like this, my advice is to try, try it out. Come mm -hmm. to it. It never hurts to try something for the first time. Mm -hmm. It never hurts. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you may find yourself like, oh, maybe I should go, maybe I shouldn't go. Mm -hmm. Come. Mm -hmm. You never know what, what may happen. You may like it. Mm -hmm. You may get involved in something else. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so, you know, just come out. It's not a big deal. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Like, like I said, we were very open, so... Yeah, yeah. So, from Project Stripes to the art and media programs where you're grooming people to take me out, uh, <laughs> to, to some of the, the advocacy work you're doing from and the health promotion, mm -hmm. it just really seems like overall that there's just a serious commitment to, to youth. Where can people go if they want to learn more about LAYC, support it financially, mm -hmm. uh, or just get involved in other events? Where can people go to find out more information? So they can go to our website, um, which is layc-dc.org, mm -hmm. um, or even call the center, the main center, at 202-319-2225, mm -hmm. um, and ask you know how, how you can help. Um, on our site, there's definitely a place where you can donate. Um, and also, if you're a youth out there, just coming even coming into the center, we're right in Columbia Heights. Um, mm -hmm or calling and seeing what kind of programs might be available because there's something for everyone at LAYC. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you all have open mics again. Yeah, take, yeah. Take my spot. I mean, the, <laughs> exactly. the conference that you all did was, was just wonderful. And, and I really think at the end of the day that if, if not just young people, but if more adults could see the work that LAYC is mm -hmm. doing, I, I really, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you all, I really yeah. believe that they would see another side to, to our young people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for all of that, I, I really commend you all for the work that you're doing. And I know that we're going to hear nothing but more positive things for another 30 plus years. <laughs> so so thanks, awesome. thank you everything, for everything that you all are doing. Thank no you. And yes. thank you for acknowledging that. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. Tab One Shorty, thank you for, for being on Real Talk. Thank, thank you. That's going to do it for another episode of Real Talk. Once again, my name is Ome Kongo. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at realtalk at omekongo.com. And remember, our youth are 50% of our population, but 100% of our future. Let's make sure that we're taking care of them. See you next time.